Hi guys, I'm Dave, and this is Beer Virtually. Today we have another beer from Boulevard. Everything we've had from Boulevard has been very good, and this one sounded very interesting. This is Boulevard's Flora Obscura. This is a dry hopped porter. I don't know that I've ever had a dry hopped porter before. Um, this is part of their special release. I don't know if they consider it a seasonal or just special release. The, um, this is not part of the, or doesn't have the Stackhouse or Smokehouse series uh, bottle cap. It's just a regular bottle cap. Wow, lots of different flavors. Almost uh, some floral, some citrus, chocolate, coffee. Man, there's a lot going on. I'm expecting this to be quite a complex beer due to just all the different ingredients in it. Uh, medium color pour, kind of cola color with a uh, medium head that I expect will dissipate fairly quickly. Alright, let's give it a first sip. Man, is definitely the, I don't think there's any citra hops in this, um, but it definitely has a citrusy smell. Wow, so much going on there. That's very interesting. This is, um, It says dry hop porter, 5.8 ABV. Fifty IBU. I'd say that's about right. Eleven ninety nine a six pack, so a little on the more expensive side. Uh, the proper glass is a pint glass. I decided to use my fancy hourglass glass from Hourglass Brewing. Here are the notes I had on this one. Flora Obscura means dark flower, which is fitting for this beer. A lot goes into this beer. Flora Obscura is dry hopped with Simcoe, Cascade, Amarillo, Mosaic, and Galaxy hops. It's five different hops. That's, that's, that's a lot of hops. The porter, is, it's a pretty robust porter. It's made up of two-row pale malt, two varieties of caramel malt, raw wheat and chocolate malt so there's definitely a lot of uh maybe the 11.99 price with all those different ingredients doesn't sound so bad it's pretty dark um through the lights almost a hair reddish It's kind of weird. It, there's so many small flavors that it almost seems scattered. I was expecting, I don't know why, maybe I should have expected that, but I was expecting a little more of a organized flavor. And there's, I mean, you get like, <clears throat> as you're drinking it, there's little, little shoots of citrus. And the citrus ranges from sweet citrus to tart citrus. So almost you got like, um, like orange or, uh, um, like tangerine flavors, and you got kind of grapefruity flavors. Then there's also like hints of dark chocolate and a little bit of coffee, but they're all kind of kind of scattered and, and popping throughout the, the the range of of the cycle that is a sip. I've talked about this before, and so for me. When I think of like, when you're tasting a beer, it starts before you taste it. It starts with the smell. You know, good. Because you, if you can't smell it, it's really hard to taste. I, um, I've met a couple of people that cannot smell due to an injury or whatever. And um, it makes it really hard to taste. So it starts with the smell. And then you have the initial mouth taste. And then it kind of changes as it goes into your mouth. And it sits in your mouth. And then once you swallow, 
so there's a taste, and then once you're done swallowing, there's usually another taste. I say taste, I should more say range of flavors, or the flavors evolve. As it evaporates, there's there's a certain flavor. As it sits on your tongue, there's a certain flavor. And some beers are very the same from the smell all the way through to the end. This one definitely changes quite a bit as it goes through that, that range. Um I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's a pretty cool bottle. This is different than um, Boulevard's normal bottle. Their normal bottles are the tall, skinny bottles. I was going to take a picture of this next to another Boulevard bottle, and I forgot before I put it in the recycle bin. But the other bottles are usually narrow and taller. But uh, it's pretty. It's kind of cool. It's got. It's kind of a dark label. It kind of looks like um, maybe like a uh, like an old time tobacco label or or something like that. I let this sit out a couple minutes because I wanted to make sure it was warm enough to release all the flavors, and I think I achieved that with temperature. I don't think it's too cold. This is definitely a beer you wouldn't want to drink too cold. You, you would lose a bunch of flavor, I think, if you drank this um, below 52 degrees. And as you drink a beer and it warms up, you, you will pick out different flavors at every kind of, at every different temperature range it will change flavor to the point where if it's cold you won't taste much when it's too warm you might taste almost too much and and for me like a beer that has a lot of hops it's kind of sit on your tongue when it's when it's too warm and it, and it kind of taints the rest of the flavors I'm gonna give this a 3.75 um I kind of expected a little different flavor but that shouldn't change That you, I mean, that, that shouldn't change my rating based on what I had expected going in. But based on what I got, I'm going to give it a 3.75. This is also a beer I think I'd be good with after one. It's a little bit it's, it's medium to heavy bodied. Um, and there's just a lot going on. A lot of different flavors all kind of merging together. We have some lacing, kind of scattered, scattered lacing. That was pretty good. Till next time. Cheers.